Hi everyone, how's it going? Tim here and this is part 4 of the course on building data science with JavaScript. And today we're gonna talk about our first processing microservice which is gonna do um, sentiment analysis. For this case we're gonna use the Stanford Cornell P uh, natural language processing software which is essentially state-of-the-art in the field. So um, I'll put a link in the description, you can have a look at it yourself, but essentially there's a bunch of annotators that uh, do just about anything that you would might need to do with a natural language. Um, you know, tokenization, nematization, part of speech recognition, named entity recognition, and sentiment analysis, which is what we're basically interested in in this case. Um, so in this case, like this is a Java tool. And uh, if you look at the usage here, you can see that, you know, you can actually use it from command line as a, jar you can use it um, using api or you can use it using a cornell p server which actually is available um, under cornell p dot run um, hopefully it is online let me just quickly check i believe it was a cornell p run maybe i'm forgetting thing um check yeah, it is cornell p run uh, maybe my internet is acting up or something is Maybe it's, it's, it's not very stable, so that's why we're going to run our own server, right? So, um, yeah, as I said, we're going to use a server and create a, essentially an adapter microservice that would connect this server to our data processing pipeline. Um, the way we do it is quite straightforward. So, uh, first of all, I took our input service and dumped one JSON article um, that is not looking very nice. Let me just say JSON and format that there you go okay i won't save that but you know just so that you have an impression so i saved one of the articles that come from the input service into a json file so that we actually have some sort of a test data that we can throw at the processing services and actually validate that output is what we expect it to be so in this case we have the article from slant magazine that talks about destiny 2 and here's our full text that we will throw into the sentiment analysis and actually see that it works. Okay, I'm gonna close it without saving. Right, so now, uh, in our, uh, as you can see, I created a folder called uh, Cornel P Processing Service that contains all our source code and everything. So package JSON is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have, uh, dependency-wise, we only have node fetch and microcore. Uh, for dev dependencies, we use microwork. I will talk about microcore separately in a few moments. Um, so let's just first talk about Cornel P bit. Uh, so as you can see here, we're using kernel p start and kernel p clean uh, node script, npm scripts to actually run the Docker container. So there's this auto build container by uh, Conrad Strack. I hope I don't butcher his name, um, which basically runs the local version of kernel p uh, inside of a container. We link the port 9000, which is uh, what it exposes. And then we just query localhost by default. And you know later when we come to deployment, we're gonna tweak that a bit. Now the kernel p bit is very straightforward. We just use node fetch. Um, kernel p takes the config using the parameters. And actually, yeah, I can um, actually demonstrate that bit so we can cd into here and say yarn kernel p start, right? It's gonna run a server here. And if I go to localhost 9000, you will actually see a proper working Stanford NLP server. And here's our annotations. So if, you, if I just delete all of that and say, I want sentiment. Um, we can actually, you know, throw in and you, you <clears throat> actually, if we refresh and, and give it some test phrase, let's, uh, for example, take the input article. Okay, come on. I want uh, format. There was a short title, I think, snippet. Yeah, so we can take this snippet, throw it in, and, you know, you can basically play around with it and see how it works because they do have a quite nice visualization of the results uh, when they return it. Um, Bear in mind, it is a pretty complex software, so it might take quite some time to execute whatever annotators you pass in, depending on your um, configuration. So hopefully that won't take too long on this machine, but uh, we can come back to it in a second. So basically what we do is, we say that uh, annotators we need is tokenize, as split and sentiment. Why we say that we need three of them is because sentiment actually depends on those two and won't work without them. So if you try to just say sentiments, the uh, kernel people will, will complain about that. 
And then we say that our pipeline language is English, which is, you know, uh, what I would expect all the articles to be. Okay, this is the results for now. Uh, you know, you can see that's all, all the basically whatever you asked for it will visualize in a nice way. So there's a part of speech recognition, named entities, there are none in this sentence, basic dependencies, and so on and so forth. But, you know, just go ahead and play with, with it yourself. Right. Back to this. Um, then the request itself is very straightforward. We just build the URI, we build the query, uh, append the query string, which is the config essentially, and then do a post request where our text is a body and we get the JSON back. JSON contains the sentences, um, which contain the sentiment value, sentiment, and some additional stuff that actually comes from those uh, tokenizing as split, which we don't care about. So in this case, I just take the sent uh, sentence and sentiment value and sentiment. And then I calculate the total sentiment, uh, which is basically, you know, sum all of that up and then divide it by length. And this is gonna be the overall sentiment of the whole article. And then uh, it counts from zero to five, I believe. Was it four, I think? No, five, uh, four, yeah, zero to four. So zero is very negative, one is negative, uh, two is neutral. It's, you know, it's a bit weird, but this is the way they do it. Um, and then I, you know, I just take the total sentiment string and return everything back. So we, as a result, we have a array of sentiments for each uh, sentence, and then we have the total sentiment and uh, total sentiment number. That's about it. So this is the sentiment calculation function, very straightforward. Now let's talk about the service itself. So um, when we did the input service, um, where's the source code here? We actually used microwork manually, right? So we had to like set up the runner, we had to subscribe to a topic, we had to reply to a specific topic, we had to stop it and clean up and do all of that stuff. We, in case with the input service, it's actually pretty straightforward, right? Because we don't really care about, like we only care about incoming uh, game name and that's it. We don't care if the service is online, we don't care what kind of type of service it is, we just, okay, we assume it's always there, it's always listening, that's it. In terms of processing services, it's gonna be a bit trickier because we, like, we don't want to, you know, Try, like we want to, um, basically we want the processing services to assemble on their own, right? So when the input uh, comes to the storage and storage says, hey, process this, uh, the storage service should just say process without saying, you know, process with this, with that, with that. It shouldn't care about that. Um, and the idea here is that we take um, this whole thing from the input and add some additional things like status reporting and wrap it into a library. So I built that small library that is called microcore. It is based on um, microwork. And the source code is very simple. So uh, basically what it does is essentially what you have seen in the uh, input service. You see, we initialize microwork, we connect, we initialize the new queue with a specific queue config. So this is one difference. Uh, we initialize the queue with uh, durable and persistent config, which means that even if we stop and restart Rabbit or you know remove the Docker container and restart it again, as long as we have the volume, the messages will stay there. So they are durable and persistent, and they don't have auto delete, which is you know basically uh, by default there is no acknowledgement. So that means that uh, whenever the consumer says uh, get give me the next message, it will be automatically removed from the queue. You can say that you want acknowledgements, which would mean that you have to manually say, okay, I'm done with the message, now remove it. Uh, but in this case, I don't think it's important for us. Right, so, uh, and then in addition to subscribing to the, you know, the ID from the config and uh, cleaning up for us, it does one more thing. It, it has this status plugin uh, that is what we are actually interested in. So if you have a look at this, uh, Microbox supports some uh, minor plugins. And this is one of them. So uh, this is a status plugin, which will report the status of this microservice every 60 seconds by default. And I haven't touched that. Um, and it will say, hey, I am microcore service. So it will say to the microcore service topic, it will say, okay, here is my status report data, which uh, consists uh, of, um, I believe by default, it just sends the config of the service, right? Second, let me just report. Yeah, so we just say, you know, here's the config. So basically, I am 
a microservice that is, uh, if we have a look at the config here, you will see that this is a, has a dkernel p, its processor, and it sends the results to store. Like those are irrelevant, but you know, whatever. You can also see the additional config. This is one thing it does. So it will uh, basically, you can listen to that topic and anytime say how many processing services are online and what are they, their IDs, right? And second thing it will do is actually handle errors for you. So basically when, uh, when it receives a message, it gives it, it triggers the on job function, which you uh, have on a creation. And it provides this callback, which is a node style callback that has error data and then the response key that is optional. And uh, if you have an error, it will stop execution. It will not send the result back, obviously, but it will also send this error to microcore error uh, topic and serialize it and give you the source of this error. So we'll say, you know, this, this microservice failed with this error with this data incoming. So you can actually, if you have a nice uh, admin UI, you can track this. And uh, cool thing about the microcore is that allows you to make a service in literally 30 lines. So we have our kernel P logic in a separate file, which is like 30 lines as well. So pretty short, you know, with comments and everything. And then to create a service, you just call create service, you provide it config uh, on in it. I mean, it's optional. So in this case, I just say, hey, we're initialized actually. And then when you have the on, day, on job function, you get the data. So in this case, if there's no data, we just do done. If there is data, we get the ID in text. And again, if there's no ID in text, we're just done. And then we send, we get the sentiments for uh, text. And then we, we are done with uh, expansion of results from sentiments and the ID. So that's about it. That's, you know, that's all we need to do. We're going to use Microcore for all our processing microservices because it just saves a lot of time. You know, I mean, obviously we can write all of that ourselves, but I don't see any need because most of that is what we already did in a um, input service, right? So um, that's actually about it. This is uh, the sentiment service. I created a small uh, services markdown here that describes what I plan to do and what kind of technologies we're going to be using and what we already did and, and what we used for that. So as you can see here, uh, we did the input service that uses OpenCritic API. We did the kernel P service that uses kernel P for that. Uh, next up, we have storage service, I think, which is going to be, so basically we have input, now we have processing, now we need a place to sync all the data into. So we're going to write a storage service that would receive the messages from input, save them, and then send them to processing. Uh, and then once we're done with that, we're going to um, finish the rest of the processing services, maybe enrichment, and then start building the user interface and the REST API based on that. That's it for the part three. Um, as usual, if you have any questions, feel free to ask here in the comments or go to the official Discord channel and ask me there. I'm usually online. Thank you for watching and as usual, I'll see you next time. Bye.